What's up, everybody? Good morning. I uh, got a few things to go over today. Um, made uh, some progress over the last week. Uh, got some rest in, was able to get some things accomplished. Uh, so I will jump into that in just a second. Um, first thing I wanted to do was, uh, well, for starters, I want to thank Nova Mage for the generous donation and address the comment that came with it. Basically, uh, the old latency thing, the reason why I took it out, um, even in that version, was because I screwed up and what was being displayed wasn't actually latency. Um, it was just some bad math uh, based on uh, the pulling speed, uh, which absolutely has nothing to do with latency, and it was causing a lot of incorrect backlash from people that were saying uh, why is it saying my latency is so high when I'm plugging it in via USB compared to wireless it's saying that there's less latency wireless that doesn't make sense uh, and they're right I mean the wireless is gonna have a little more latency um, albeit uh, nothing that you would actually recognize but uh, it does have a little bit more um, but what is different between wireless and wired is Bluetooth will cycle or pull or you know loop through um, getting the device state uh, as fast as the application or the operating system will allow the application to cycle. Um, USB on the other hand uh, unless you're using special drivers is fixed to a predefined pull rate of I actually don't remember I think it's a uh, 500 Hertz something like that uh, it might be more um, but yeah USB is fixed to that uh, because first of all there's you're when you're talking about 500 Hertz uh, you're talking about it's getting a device state once every two milliseconds um, and there's no real reason to be pulling devices you know that quick um, because it doesn't affect latency. Latency and pulling rate are uh, not synonymous with each other. Um, so when you're pulling a device 500 times a second and you're playing a game and you know your frame rates locked at you know at best 144 frames per second on some of these monitors, uh, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, you're making control changes that aren't, actually aren't even going into effect in the next frame of rendered graphics. So, um, so anyways, all that aside, um, because of the generous donation, uh, I did want to directly uh, address it uh, as well as, you know, hopefully come up with a meaningful compromise. Um, so... Even though we can't show latency, it's actually impossible for us to actually measure through software how long it takes a wireless signal to get from this to the computer and for the computer to process it into the game. Um, there's no actual way to met for us to measure that. Uh, so what we can do is we can show the pooling speed. Um, which can give users a little bit of feedback uh, if maybe the application's stuttering or having some issues uh, on really low-end machines keeping up. Um, it could be a useful uh, form of feedback. So what we did over here, go over Input Mapper, and I will fire up my DualShock 4. Is we did bring back a graph but now it indicates the data rate uh, which is more accurate as to what's actually going on uh, so this graph shows um, and you see there is a dip that is just a uh, blue uh, Windows Bluetooth it takes a while for the handshake to finalize uh, that's pretty normal 
But anyways, um, so what this is showing is bar graph. Um, I'll have numbers in there to actually give it a little bit more meaning, but it just indicates uh, how fast the controller or how fast the application is able to get information from the controller, not in a term of latency, but how many cycles per second. Um, so uh, the bottom of the graph would be one packet per second, which would be pretty slow. Uh, then you would have an issue. Top of the graph is a thousand times a second, which is insanely high and absolutely no reason to pull that quick, but um, Input Mapper does it anyways. Uh, so, and you know, further, the further signify why the latency number was a bad thing. Um, I got one DualShock 4 paired up. I'm going to turn on a second one. And you're going to see what happens there to my pulling rate. Uh, it gets cut in half and it gets split between it. Because now the application is having to get data states from two devices um, each time it pulls. So it has to share that between the two. And there's a Bluetooth handshake going on again. Uh, so, for that reason, uh, latency is actual, is garbage. What used to be used as latency is garbage. Um, even though I have tool controllers paired, you're getting the same exact latency as if I had one. Um, it's just not reading data as quick from each of them. But uh, with that graph there showing somewhere in the middle, maybe just a tad bit lower, it's still reading 400 to 500 frames per second, which is ridiculous. Um, you really don't even need more than like 60 or something, and it's reading like 400, 500. So uh, I'm hesitant to add it back in because I know I'm still going to get people, you know, coming to me saying, uh, well, why is, why is my data rate so slow? I'm using an i7, blah, blah, blah. And uh, there's people that won't get it. But, you know, if nothing else, it looks cool. So I added it back in. Um, obviously, we got our battery states too. I'll also put in state whether it's charging or discharging, all that stuff. And you know, you know, with this new home screen, there's plenty of room. So uh, I'll play, I'll tinker around, see what I can add. Uh, so, anyways, that is that. Um, I did get a couple more translations done. Uh, I got the home in there. Anywhere where I'm seeing that weird uh, the bracket plate, the placeholders for the variables. Um, I'm trying to remember to go back in there and add translations into the translation file uh, for that. So, matter of fact, if I see, um, I know it's been a while since we've even talked about translations, but I'm trying to get this to launch up here, and there it is. Uh, now I got two. Uh, but basically, this is how the translation works, and uh, the translation file is public in the installation. Uh, you can create your own, um, and if you want to add translations on it, some of these have missing. Uh, if you want to add stuff onto there to help me out, uh, you can. And this is just, you know, basically what the application runs off of uh, for all of its different strings and all that stuff, so... Um, if you want to be a translator, I know I have some of you out there that are already helping out with this stuff. Uh, if you want to help out with some of the missing languages, um, just drop me a line in the forum or something like that. And, uh, I'll, you know, get you set up on how to go through this. <clears throat> I should probably even create some sort of a tutorial video for it. It's really straight, uh, it's really straightforward. Um, you just need to know where the translation file is located. And you need to install this uh, third-party uh, translation application um, from, I think the company's called Unclassified. Yeah, Unclassified Software TX Translation is what I use. Um, I used to use my own stuff, my own built-in, but this is so simple and small that uh, it didn't make sense for me not to use it. So, uh, anyways... Uh, still working on translations where I see them. Um, we got the graphs here. A uh, couple other things going on. Profiles. You can finally rename profiles within the application. Um, 
for some reason that was an oversight of mine that I missed for a while. Uh, but yeah, you can go in here and rename stuff now. It takes place immediately, so um, I think even assigned profiles will be renamed immediately. Nope, I could be wrong. I am wrong. Yeah. Okay, well, anyways. Um, let's see, next thing. Um, mapping, still working on that. Uh, one of the big things that I am working on now, though, is to bring keyboard and mouse mappings. Um, I just have A through Z here uh, for testing. Uh, eventually, I'll have all keys on here. Um, mouse options, too. Uh, so, but anyways, yeah, I'm just working on uh, figuring out how I'm going to mix these device states from which could be coming from multiple controllers are all mapping to a single virtual keyboard. Uh, so it's just a matter of me putting together uh, some extra code to handle this a lot different than, you know, just mapping from one controller to another controller would work. So uh, that's something else I'm working on right now. Um, actually, I think that about does it. Uh, the home page of the website, um, I'm putting a lot of work into that right now. I want to finish up that, or at least finish up the design of the website uh, so people can start using that as the main hub for input map or beta. Um, hopefully soon the automatic upload that I use for my nightly builds, uh, I can get that to start pointing to the new beta website and not the old website uh, that way I can have everything that has to do with input mapper one seven is going through that one site now instead of, you know, kind of branching off and, uh, going to different places. Uh, so I think that'll about do it. I can't think of anything else I have in here that I haven't already touched upon. Nothing's ringing a bell. All right. Uh, so I'll keep working on that. I have a couple of uh, things on my to-do list, the website. Um, there are a couple bugs that I'm still noticing in Input Mapper here. Um, I need to get the icon library uh, that I use in Input Mapper. It needs an update. I need to get a lot more icons in there that I'm missing. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, Benjamin um, released a new version of Fireshock. Uh, which supposedly supports the nav controller now without issue. So uh, I can get to work on incorporating a plugin for the Fireshock uh, finally, which will add DualShock 3 support and PlayStation 3 nav controller support to Input Mapper. So that's a cool one. Uh, so, uh, all right, I think that's it, guys. I will talk to you again next week. Have a good one.